I am Brian Helpage with Team Aquascape and we are starting a new project. It is about 50, maybe 45 degrees outside, which is perfect working conditions. It's got a bog filter on it, it's got a really big berm. We've got Chris on the machine all day. The unique thing about this project is the homeowner wanted to do some of the excavation himself. So let me show you what I am seeing for the first time too and uh, we'll see what we got planned for us for the rest of the day. So here's the shape of the pond. We've got about 16 feet from that point there to that point there, about 24 feet from here to here. He's dug the bog filter out over there. I said dig down the first 12 inches and we'll take it from there. And he looks like he did it really, really well. We've got a big berm sitting over here. The design of the pond is to have a waterfall off of this berm facing like always towards the house. It'll fall into a little upper pool over there a meandering stream will come down into a waterfall right over in here. There's a bridge that's going to go in right where about the machine is sitting, coming this way. Big boulders holding all of this dirt back, also kind of defining the pathway that then leads to a fire pit that'll sit over in this space here. Homeowner's also taking the fence down because uh, he has a new fence coming in later. So this yard is getting a huge makeover. Love working in sites like this because we can't really make it any messier than it already is. We got dirt over here, dirt over there, dirt over there. We don't have to watch out for too much stuff. Easy, easy access for him to bring the stone all the way back from there to here. All right, quick little update. Chris and I have been digging, digging, digging. It's just the two of us out here today, but we're making a whole lot of progress. We've got our different shelves. There's the area that was dug out before we dropped down. This is around 27 inches here. Everything kind of gently pitches this way. We're down about another foot here, so we're just over three feet deep in this area here. And then if you guys can kind of make out this trough area right in here, this is something we're gonna try different. On this project, not so much different ever because we've done it before, but our liner is gonna come in form to this area. Skimmer box is gonna go right there. And then we've got a snorkel and a centipede coming in through here. What this is gonna do as all that stuff sits on top of the liner is it'll actually circulate water from the bottom of the pond, pulling all of that stuff off the bottom. That's gonna then feed the wetland filter there. Circulating warmer water down there and then pushing up through warmer water there will keep a huge hole open in the ice over there and circulate water not just from the bottom but also from the top. Now the reason we chose the location of the snorkel and the centipede right in here is because we knew our skimmer box was going to go right there. I want all of my water pulled from basically the same area. Putting the snorkel anywhere, if I put the snorkel there, put the snorkel there, put the snorkel over here, when the water moves from this area and this area it could get pulled right to there and not get pulled into the skimmer box. So I still want all of that surface debris to get all pulled over into this area and then the skimmer box will grab it. The other challenge we have on this site is an awful lot of groundwater. So Chris has been using this little mini machine here, but we found a drain tile over here. Nothing's coming through the drain tile, but definitely coming through the vein of gravel around the drain tile. Now this pump's been running for three hours straight, so you can imagine how full this would get if we didn't leave the pump on. And you can kind of see some areas pooling up in here and there. So not bad, a few hours of work. Just the two of us, it didn't make sense to bring the whole crew out on a day like today, because there's not a whole lot they could do. Tomorrow, we'll have a whole lot more of guys out here. And I would imagine because all of our rock is way up at the street and not back here where I would have liked it. A few guys are just gonna spend most of the day shuffling rocks down here while uh, the rest of us set them. Rocks up there, no good. Rocks back there, would have been better. All the business is, fixing problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, 
All right, we're still out here day one. Just Chris and I. Digging seems to never end. <laughs> And let me show you why really quick. Is it never ending because I'm the one on the shovel? Yeah. <laughs> so Chris, explain a little bit what's going on. Like I left the viewers, if you will, with the suspense of how are we gonna handle this groundwater? It's not just coming in from one area. It's like all over. Yeah, when we got back from, from grabbing lunch, this trench that you dug for the snorkel and centipede, I mean, there was what, eight, 10 inches of water in here and we were only gone an hour. So you can see it's coming in from over here, it's coming in from the backside over there. It's not stopping, and it hasn't rained in four or five days. So we need to be proactive about this. I can only imagine how much groundwater there is in the spring when uh, during their spring rains. So hopefully counteract that in the future. We're gonna put in an under drain system using a perforated drain tile in those packing peanuts, or at least in the fabric, digging this trench. And it's kind of a spider web of trenches underneath the liner with that four inch drain tile. So everything's all gonna tie together. This main one comes down here and we're gonna run it down underneath the lowest part of our pond, which is where this snorkel centipede is set up. And then that pipe will end up discharging somewhere back over there. So as long as it discharges, and this is super important guys, as long as under drain system discharges lower than water level, then we'll be fine. It's when it's elevated above water level that we're gonna run into issues. We're relying on the hydrostatic pressure. The water inside the pond is actually going to help push that water out through the discharge pipe behind me. So Awesome. For those of you that are wondering why we didn't shut the pump off down over here and or what that noise was as Chris was talking, it's the pump sitting down here. That pump has to stay on the entire time we've been digging otherwise the groundwater builds up too much and then we're just digging in mud and water the whole time I mean I literally see it weeping out of the sides there the sides over here it's a constant funnel of water coming in through here so we've got this whole French drain system it'll be underneath the liner the water takes the path of least resistance rather than pushing the liner up and creating a bubble it'll fill up the pipe again underneath the liner come back out this way, eventually pop out above the soil over here and a trench going down that way. The pipe will keep the hydrostatic pressure from pushing up the liner. So a little extra work, but every time we do a spring clean out, this won't be an issue with the liner bubbling out. We won't get a call back in five years hearing that they see a big turtle shell, which would be the rubber liner bubbled up the, above the water level. So it's taking Chris and I a few extra hours to get this done, but at least it's done the right way. And we are all about, turn your shirt around. Bonds done right, customer served right. <laughs> All right, day two out here, and we've got one extra guy with us today. We've got Juan, myself, and Chris. We've got our French drain system almost finished underneath the liner. After we get that all buttoned up, then we'll get our fabric in here, our liner. The goal today is to get a bunch of the big boulders that were out front that were delivered yesterday back here and start rocking this pond in. So you can see Chris down here. You can see where we dug the trench. So we had about a 10 inch deep trench through this area here, down through there. All of this coming down to the lowest part of the pond, pea gravel through everything. So all of that water can infiltrate through the pea gravel into a pipe that runs in through there. Over to here, pipe goes that way and then back out. We're still gonna do our snorkel centipede over the top of the liner, but we have now solved all that running water. Last night we left that sump pump down in here and it never shut off. It stayed plugged in all night and thank God we made the decision to do that. Otherwise this thing would have been filled with water probably to about that shelf over there. You can see Juan over there <laughs> pulling the fabric by himself. He looks aggravated, so I'm gonna go help him. <laughs> Found a scrap piece of drainage pipe, put it in the tube, because unrolling a 30 by 50 foot liner with three guys is difficult. With two guys, it's cake, look at them. <laughs> so just to put a little piece of drainage tubing in there, cut it just a touch longer than the cardboard, strap on either side so it doesn't cinch too tight, which would have caused it to uh, pinch the cardboard a little bit more. Awesome, one thing went right. <laughs> Progress is being made. Fabric liner is in, a snorkel centipede pump vaults in, and some rocks. Let me turn it around and show you He-Man Hansen. Oh, Those of you that don't know who He-Man is, shame on you. Hey Chris, so just give us a quick overview of what we're looking at. Move some of those cobbles and show them what a centipede actually looks like. You're only gonna be able to see a fraction of it right now. 
But we've got our pre-filter, which is these cobbles over the top of the entire centipede. So we are using the historical centipede as a bottom suction over here. So we're gonna have, what do we decide, the 5PL uh -huh. here? So all the water will be sucked in through the perforations in the centipede, taken into a pump that'll sit in the snorkel, and then kick that over to the wetland filter. This goes all the way throughout, which you saw earlier in the video. In order to make this easy to maintain, because remember guys a lot, and girls, a lot of stuff's gonna get sucked down in here. These cobbles are gonna act as the pre-filter. You don't want a lot of very fine gravel for two reasons. One, it's incredibly hard to clean that stuff out. The cobbles you can just pull, pick up, throw out of the way, clean out all the debris, and then put them back. The other thing is, is these pieces of gravel are even almost too small, and they'll fit right down in there. So anything smaller than like the inch to two inch will go down in there. So we've got the cobbles as our pre-filter. Then we'll end up top dressing over that, filling with gravel, disguising it so it all looks like it's part of the seamless bottom. Bada bing, bada boom. Awesome. Okay. So we get some great bottom circulation. There's the pump, the snorkel part. Pump sits inside there, pulling water through here. Skimmer box is gonna sit right there. So we're still pulling all of our water kind of from the same area in the pond. It also becomes a super, super convenient area for a clean out pump. So if we need to come back here and do a spring clean out and drain the pond, pump can actually go inside the snorkel vault. All of the water will be pulled down to the bottom of the pond through the centipede and makes it really fast and efficient for the guys to do a spring clean out. All right. And would you say by throwing the clean out pump down there, it it'll eliminates a lot of that crap and debris that gets sucked into the bottom of the clean out yeah, pump? Yeah, so you're never cleaning off the bottom of uh, the clean out pump, yep. which, is, which is great. And so all that stuff will just collect right on top of that gravel. You could even put a filter mat or something there. This makes it really easy. So a huge bell and whistle on a pond, help immensely with the clarity, circulation, fish health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.